Holland, land of canals and windmills, of radiant bulb fields and fertile soil. Of colorful people in native costume. That is the popular conception of Holland. I've often been there and seen all these things, but my latest trip to Holland was in quest of something new. I shall long remember that dark summer night when I arrived in Rotterdam. I passed by her great river and paused. The city was en fête for the coronation of Queen Juliana. The river was a blaze of light. Appropriately, the Rotterdam people had made the river their showpiece, for their river is the be-all and end-all of the city. My quest to Rotterdam concerned the River Rhine. So I went to see my friend, who has a wide knowledge of the river and all that it means to Europe. He had, in fact, made his own film during a survey journey from Rotterdam to Bath. And that is what he showed me. That's virtually a map of industrial Europe. Well, I suppose it is. For as you see, the River Rhine links directly with the sea by the great new waterway. The Rhine is the artery of Western Europe and of the riparian nations. It seems as though the Rhine serves most of Europe. In point of fact, it does. Look at this. Not many people realize what it means. The Rhine is surely the principal factor in the industrial, commercial and economic recovery of Europe. But first, you must appreciate the importance of Rotterdam. If ever there was a working harbour, this is one. To Rotterdam there come ocean ships bearing cargoes from every quarter of the globe of every imaginable description. And that's important, for Rotterdam Harbour caters for the rapid handling of every type of cargo. Besides general cargo, there are port basins and equipment, each specializing in the handling of the specific cargoes. Bulk cargo, such as coal, for instance, is transshipped out of inland craft from the Ruhr to ocean-bound vessels. The world importance of this traffic is evidenced by the diversity of flags one sees flying from the ships. Not least impressive is the modern equipment for direct loading and unloading from... shipbuilding, for which Holland has been famous throughout the centuries. That great floating dock can handle vessels up to 30,000 tons. 
Among the light industries, there is tea and coffee, milk products, margarine. Holland's industries employ more than one third of her population. We have a big and intensive export trade, not only by sea, but by a network of modern canals and rivers, which reach every part of Holland and link up with those of Western Europe. Here is one of the famous Dutch spirit works, producing such things as industrial alcohol, yeast, and even penicillin, situated beside the canal which serves it as it does so many Dutch industries. In this great system of waterways, the Rhine plays the predominant part. I left Rotterdam aboard that small tug. With an hour to wait, I made my way to where the Rhine barges assemble. Nearby, there is a barge yard where these highly specialized craft are built. To the Dutch bargeman, his ship is his house, with every modern amenity, even central heating. He and his family are as comfortable as they would be in a home ashore. Now, look at that strange craft. What on earth is it? That's a very modern tug. She is some 2,000 horsepower. And streamlined, too. Now, how many barges can she tow? As many as eight upstream, that's to say a total tonnage of about 15,000 tons. Well, they seem to ha handle those heavy cables as though they were nothing. You mean the tow? Yes. Well, you see, that's habitude. These men are born and bred to the work. For generations, their forefathers have sailed the Rhine. Without these expert sailors, the picture of Europe would have been very different. The Ruhr might still have been fields and forests. I went along to the bridge at Nijmegen, so as to get a full impression as the big tow passes. What a job handling a great string of craft like that. Yes, navigation on the Rhine is a profession which can only be learned by practical experience. Father teaches son. So it has gone on from generation to generation. Keeping house on the Rhine looks easy. The general store comes up to your very door. Yes, indeed. There's no need to queue up there. That is Lobit, the Dutch frontier. Usually, the barges anchor there for the night and pass Dutch customs early in the morning. Then, on to Emmerich for the German clearance. An immense traffic. The current looks strong. Nothing to watch or see later. That opening over there is the entrance to the Vesel Dateln Canal. You see the area that it serves on this map. I'm beginning to understand the vital significance of the Rhine to Western Europe. Yes, you certainly will as we get into the industrial Ruhr. For instance, here at Ruhrot, one of the greatest coal ports. Here is one of the most modern and efficient coal handling installations in the world. Now 
Now, where's that? That's Duisburg, another important industrial harbour. From here, the Rhine has another important artery, the canal, which serves Mulheim and Essen and links up with the Dortmund M system. We're at Cologne now, the beautiful old city of university and cathedral fame. Now what's that scale? That's a water gauge, most important factor in the Rhine navigation. For well, this shallow river is mostly fed by glacier waters, and in certain seasons, the level changes from day to day. Now you're seeing one of the most beautiful and historical parts of the river. This is the stretch which passes through the mountainous district, land of old castles. Some are used today as navigational signal towers. These old feudal castles perched high on the rocky escarpment remind us that the Rhine was the classic river of the Middle Ages. Those look like vineyards. They are. For from here comes the world famous Rhine wine. So this part of the Rhine is steeped in legend and romance, isn't it? Indeed it is. The greatest of all such stories is, of course, the one about the Lorelei, that great towering mass of rock from which the legendary maid lured ships and men to destruction by her song. This reach of the river is the most difficult to navigate, for here the currents are extremely strong and rapids and whirlpools abound. And here two deep channels have been blasted. We are now nearing Mainz, where the River Main and its Main-Donau connection serves a vast area of Central Europe. Now what's that opening? That's the Neckar Junction. This canalized Neckar serves an important area. It's the artery of the Mannheim hinterland. That, by the way, is one of the old paddle wheels. Powerful tugs are required from here to Strasbourg, for on this section of the river the current is very strong. Now we're at Mannheim, one of the most important of the big inland ports, for it serves such a dense industrial area. Are those Dutch tankers? Yes, they are. You, you see more Dutch craft than any others. Yes, I think the Rhine should be called a Dutch river, judging by the number of craft one sees from Holland. And after all, we were the commercial pioneers of Rhine navigation. That's a passenger boat. There's a regular service from Rotterdam to Baal, and that's the best way to see the Rhine. These fine ships give every advantage and comfort which we expect in modern travel. Excellent Dutch food. Comfortable lounges. And deck space. Homely cabins and good service. There's another of those new tugs. It is. They fairly spell power when you see them underway. You see here quite plainly the mileage posts marked in kilometers. The current is enormously strong. They're the plains of Alsace, but the river banks are pretty densely wooded. At Strasbourg, the main stream has a side turning, as it were. This enters the port of Strasbourg. It looks a fine modern city. Strasbourg, the capital of Alsace, is a strange mixture of the old and the new. Here is the headquarters of the Rhine Navigation Administration. That's coal, isn't it? Yes. This is another important coal port. But amongst all the Strasbourg traffic, the export of potash is one of the most important and calls for very special handling, both overland and in loading into the ships. From Strasbourg, the barges are of lesser tonnage, for the river is shallower and the current even stronger. This is most evident at Breisach. 
That's another water gauge, isn't it? Yes, they're everywhere. Soon we shall see the real reason for this tremendous current. For we're coming to the great barrage at Kems by the Swiss frontier. Is that the barrage? It is. Fifty feet in height. That enormous volume of water is flowing down from the alpine snows and glaciers which feed the Rhine. This barrage provides electric power for the surrounding area and to operate the huge double lift locks at Kem. Here we are at Baal, I suppose. Yes, indeed. More than 500 miles from Rotterdam. It's wonderful to think that this old city is really Switzerland's seaport. For after all, it's in direct navigational touch with Rotterdam. Of course, that's just the point. The Rhine via Rotterdam is Switzerland's direct link by water with the ocean highways of the world. And Switzerland seems to have a very good port. Yes, indeed she has. Not large as compared with the big ocean terminals, but nevertheless splendidly equipped. It's a strange thought, you know. When you think of this port, in direct contact with the sea, more than 500 miles away and 800 feet above the sea level, And yet, on the return journey, with the current in its favour, that can be made in a very short time. The big barge trains travel at as much as 15 miles an hour, and before you know where you are, you're once again in Rotterdam. Now more than ever, you realise its key importance, for from all the inland areas we've learned about, waterborne goods and materials pass through Rotterdam to the Seven Seas, and thus to the far corners of the world.